Okay, a quick video here for how to assign part numbers. If you go to the die procurement page on the wiki, you'll see that we've got the instructions here for assigning part numbers. So I'm going to walk you through this real quick. I've got a set of profile drawings that Kendall made me, just a little sample set. So as you look at these drawings, you'll see that he's got the part numbers listed on here. The way you're going to do the part number, as it says on the wiki page, is you're going to use the prefix, a dash, and the first two digits, which describe where the part's being used, then an X, and then you're just going to number the dies. You just do them sequentially, one through however many dies you have, and that way you know how many dies you have, the number gives you that information. In some cases, you may have uh, sub-assemblies, so if you've got a thermally broken part like this, you're going to have the assembly part number, W75-11X3, then you're going to have two sub-assemblies, W75-AX17, W75-BX16. So <clears throat> again, these parts are put in here uh, so that you have them in the drawing set, and you can get the part numbers assigned when you run Gen Notes. So the first thing you do is you run the Gen Notes program. You're going to select the document. It'll open that and run GenNotes on it. So now I'm going to go over to <clears throat> the GenNotes Gen program. Under Forms at the top here, click on Part Numbers. This form will pop up. It has five boxes in it. First thing you do is run get part numbers. That just processes the part numbers themselves. You then click edit profile data. And then you're going to put in a description. This is just a sample, so I'm going to put this in so as these get created, I can delete them out of the database afterwards. But you would put in the actual description you want for these guys in the database. Um, and then what you have here is hollow, solid, or assembly. So again, in our drawing that we were looking at, I'm going to take this one as an example. That's a W75-11X3. This one will be an assembly. I'm just going to put all these others in solid. This is a sample. You'll notice your AX and BX parts are here also, and again, just hollow, to, hollow or solid into those. So far, so good. So you fill in your descriptions and your information here. Now you run Get New Part Numbers. We have to put in a job number. So now the program went through and it assigned actual sheetrock trims and part numbers for all of these. As you can see here, these are all listed out. Um, this one that's an assembly got a new part number, W751124. And so these subparts, we need to get those subparts here. So hang on one second, let me go get those. So it's the BX16. The AX17. So that's a B50 and an A37. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to update these uh, drawing the drawing file itself. So I'm going to close the one in AutoCAD real quick. So after you've updated the part numbers, the last step is to click on the subassembly box, and it'll list any of the parts that had an A instead of an H or an S. And then you're going to put in the actual A and B parts that go with that. And hit OK. And those are the steps. 
Now when you go to the portal and go to the um, engineering and die information, you can go to the die information subassembly. And those parts that we just did will be showing up in here now. So as we make the new parts, the new um, pieces that we just did will show up in this sheet because you listed them as assemblies and listed their subassemblies. If you don't do that step, then they won't show up in this step. And they also won't drive the metal order form. So that's it. Basically walk through the form one step at a time, and that gets you the part numbers and also updates your drawings and gives you the new part numbers on your drawings. Thank you very much.